Hello, virtuous thought leaders, scholars, and virtue change agents. My name is Dr. Lisa Marie Portugal, and I am the Leadership Architect. I'd like to welcome you today to another talk that I have prepared for you and in service to you and your goals. This is out of one of my books called A Culture of Excellence, Virtuous Leadership Principles for Organizational Success, a Management System. And on the cover slide there, that is also the cover of the book, the four cardinal virtues, prudence, justice, fortitude, and temperance. Here is my personal and professional uh, brand logo. Um, I personally love virtuous leadership, but there are many different types of uh, leadership styles that you can take a look at and see what would be best for your particular brand. And I encourage you to think deeply about what your leadership style and brand might be and maybe develop a logo for yourself. Okay, let's continue on. So we will get into the About Dr. Portugal page, an Aristotelian virtue framework, why should I be ethical? Short-term wins, damaged reputation, loss of trust, and conclusion and references. And this particular talk is called Aristotelian Virtue Framework. All right, there is my about page. And of course, as you know, if you've been following me, I am all about a shared culture of values and virtuous leadership. Okay, so here is an Aristotelian virtue framework, um, and I will do a little bit of narration here, but I thought I would add this chart because it's very cool. You may want to stop the um, talk later and take a look at the chart um, in more detail because it's very interesting. As you see, virtue is in the center. Those are all of the things that we would, you know, hope to be, right? Um, I like this one here, one, two, three, four, the fourth, fifth one, one, two, three, four, the fourth one down, magnificence, right? And then magnanimity under that. I'm always talking about magnanimity. That is the combination of all the virtues and um, it helps us to aspire to the virtue of greatness. That's what magnanimity means. Uh, but we can only get there in ourselves, in our society, in our uh, communities, in our nation, through the practice of virtue building and understanding ourselves and committing to an Aristotelian virtue framework. As you can see on the left, those are uh, vices, uh, deficiency in any of these virtues. And on the right, it's the excess of, of these virtues. So if we take courage, as a virtue. On the left, the deficiency of courage is cowardice. And then on the right, the excess of courage is rashness. So that would be, um, you know, the excess and the deficiency. Very cool, right? So you might want to take a look at some of this. I, here's another one. Virtue in the center, industrious. I like to feel in, and be industrious. Um, but on the deficiency side, it's indolence. And on the excessive side, it's over ambitious. So everything has its balance, right? Okay, so at times, some executives may in theory appreciate business ethics, but in practice, feel an ethical framework is impractical from a financial returns point of view. Mainly the challenge exists with executives believing that the principles required in an ethical framework may not always work in a practical sense in a business environment. Thus, what is required is proving to the business executive that, they, that a virtuous ethical framework can provide both a prudent business perspective and an ethical justification. An Aristotelian virtue framework with utilitarianism and duty theory can be a useful rationale for convincing business executives about the value of a shared culture of excellence for organizational success. Why should I be ethical? Very interesting, right? Well, I love this uh, graphic here with Aristotle, and I love this quote. This is one of my favorites of his. I have many others, and I think I have a slide with another one uh, next, but this one I just love. We are what we repeatedly do. Excellence, then, is not an act, but a habit. Very cool, right? So we want to instill those habits within ourselves, so that we can reach a measure of excellence in our own lives, both personally, family, and professionally. So a common question some executives may ask us, 
Why should I be ethical if it isn't sound for business at any given time when making a decision? Executives should understand that ethics and business are intertwined in business activity and leaders should strive to make ethically sound business decisions because it fosters and promotes the health and well-being of the organization and its employees. Short-term wins, damaged reputation, and loss of trust. I love this Aristotle quote as well. Those who know do, and those that understand teach. Very cool, right? So you are in the process of understanding and building your leadership competencies so that you can go out into the world wherever you are and whatever interaction you're having with others um, and teach what are our Christian values, what are our principles, what are our standards, and why is that important? Short-term wins can jeopardize an organization's brand and customer perception. Furthermore, legal entanglements can further harm an organization's reputation and bottom line. Finally, short-term wins for the individual making a poor decision can lead to costly legal problems, damaged reputation, loss of trust, and an inability to advance future career aspirations. So there you go. There are a lot of reasons for us to adopt an Aristotelian virtue framework. So in conclusion, let's think about this particular question, reflect on it throughout your day, um, and see what, you, what ideas you can come up with in your own life. In your view, what are other reasons to implement a virtuous framework in business and elsewhere? And here is the reference slide. I want to thank you so much for developing uh, your own leadership competencies. God bless you and have a beautiful day. Goodbye.